Hi everyone, in this lecture we will talk about another uh, container that is available in standard template library. It's called a vector, okay? So we are going to look at what is a vector. So a vector is nothing but it's a dynamic array, okay? So it's an array that can grow and shrink in size. So these are the arrays that can grow and shrink in size automatically depending upon the requirements okay for example uh, if you have an array like this and suppose it has only four uh, space for four elements and suppose if you fill all the four elements then the way this vector is going to grow it is going to double itself okay for example if the initial size was x it will make its size 2x okay okay so in the beginning it is possible the vector contains only one element or zero elements but as you keep on adding elements to this vector it it will grow in size okay and there is a certain limit uh, that is defined by how much memory you you have on your system or on your server that will define how large the vector can grow in size okay so again this memory is going to be linear but we are not worried about uh, how much memory to allocate okay this will be managed internally by the vector class itself okay so let us see how we can uh, use vectors so the first step is you have to include this header file called hash include vector and after that we can uh, construct vector object okay so we can make vector object and there are multiple ways in which you can uh, make this object so let me show you so the first way is you can uh, say a vector is a class and also when you are defining a object you have to define what type of data this array is going to hold if this is going to hold characters you will say okay it's a vector of char if it is going to hold a book you can say it's a vector of book but for our case we are just going to make a vector of integer which means all elements of this dynamic array will be of the type and this is what we are going to do so i can say okay uh, this is a vector i can also make another vector b and i can say 5 comma 10 so this basically means uh, there are five integers in the array and they have a value 10 so this is pretty useful when you want to initialize a vector of zeros okay so if you want n number of zeros you can say okay there is a vector with n zeros uh, n elements and it contains the value 0 you can also create a vector by initializing it with the elements of another vector I can say okay uh, create a vector C and initialize it with all the elements of B I can say from B dot begin till b dot end copy all these elements in the vector c or i can also say create a vector d and initialize with some elements like this let's say 10 and 14 okay so this is these are some of the ways in which you can create and initialize a vector okay we will also have a look how we can take user input okay so this, these are some of the ways in which you can create and initialize a vector. Let us also look at how we can iterate over the vector, how, how we can iterate over the array or the vector. So this is pretty easy. Okay, so let's see how we can iterate over the vector. Suppose you want to iterate over the C vector, then you can say, okay, uh, for int i equals to zero, i less than c dot size so the size method defines how many elements your vector is going to contain and you can say i plus plus and like an array you can access ith element of the array just by writing c of i okay you can say c of i that's it and let me add a comma here so this is one way to iterate over the elements of the vector there are multiple ways the next way is we can also use iterators okay so i can say auto it that is going to start from uh, let's say b dot begin 
and i will go till b dot end and i will say it plus plus so it is like a pointer that is going to iterate over different locations in the dynamic array and this iterator uh, is defined inside the vector class okay so okay let me tell you so there is a class vector and inside that class you have defined iterator okay so if you want to iterate over a vector you will create a iterator of this particular type so it will have a data type called uh, vector of int uh, colon iterator so this is the complete name for this particular class because it is defined inside the vector class so if you want to replace auto you have to write this so here i can do c out star of it followed by a comma okay so you can see this also gives me same output because uh, b uh, vector b and vector c contain the same data so we have seen two ways how to iterate over a vector let's have a look at another way that i like the most so this is uh, for each loop okay so i can say for every element x that is let's say for uh, every integer x that lies in the vector v or that lies in the vector b i'm just going to see out x that's it and let's run our code okay so the way it's going to work is like this i'm going to say okay uh, suppose these are the elements i can say for auto x or int x that lies in d so d is a vector and this x will have a data type which is data type of one element of the vector so it's of the type int x okay so either you use int or you use auto both are same in this case so you can say okay x is going to take value 1 then it's going to do 3 4 and 5 and so on okay so this is what uh, this is how you can write a for each loop to iterate over the vector and yeah so maybe we should put an handle here So this is how you can uh, traverse the vector. One of the few ways, three we have discussed three ways to traverse over the vector. And I want to discuss uh, some more functions. Okay. Suppose you want to accept elements from the user as input and add them to the vector. Okay. So I can make a vector of integers v, and I can say okay int n for int i equals to zero let me take input n int i equals to 0 i less than n i plus plus and i can ask user to give me some number okay i can say int number scene number and i can say v dot pushback number so this pushback method uh, it will do it will add the element to the end of the vector okay so it adds an element to the end of the vector okay so suppose this is the uh, vector and suppose it is full okay and if you do uh, 0 1 2 3 4 if you do c out v of 4 you will get a segmentation fault but if you do v dot push back and you say okay i want to add an element which is 10 in this vector this vector will expand its size it will go from size x to twice its size so size will be expanded in this case okay so pushback does two things it inserts the element to the end of the vector and it also uh, expands the memory if needed okay now you might ask so there may, may be a question in your mind suppose this is a linear memory and the next part of the memory is not available for expansion then how vector is going to do the work so generally what happens at the memory level is suppose you have this vector 1 2 3 4 5 and you want to create a array that is double the size of this one so on a memory level uh, your program will try to find a memory where you have at least 10 boxes available and it is going to copy all the elements from the previous array into the new array 1 2 3 4 5 and then it is going to add the new element okay so this array will be deleted 
and this array will be allocated again so that is why uh, when you are doubling the memory it's going to be an expensive operation okay so doubling of memory is an expensive operation you should try to avoid it okay so we will see how we can avoid this particular operation so let's first have a look at pushback and let's see the output of this vector so i can say in text that lies in v c out x so i should uh, add some numbers here let's say i want to give five numbers and these numbers are let's say 10 20 30 40 50 okay so you can see we are getting the output as 10 20 30 40 and 50 now one thing to note here is we have created two vectors one vector is d this contains five elements and we have another vector v that also contains five elements but we want to understand uh at memory level how they are different okay so understand at memory level uh, what are the differences in two what are the differences in the two okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you some functions first of all we are going to use a function called c out v dot size so v dot size gives us how many elements the vector contains another function c out v dot capacity that effectively shows the size of underlying array and c out v dot max size so this function gives us how much a vector can expand in the worst case based upon the memory available in the ram okay so maximum number of elements a vector can hold in the worst case according to the uh, available memory in the system okay so let me run this so you can see uh yeah let me put a end here and let's also do the same thing for our uh other vector that is d okay now let's uh, make a comparison here So when you do c out v dot size, this size is five because the vector contains five elements. And when you do d dot size, this size is also five. So this is also five. But when you do v dot capacity, this capacity is eight. And when you do uh, d dot capacity, this capacity is five. So this is because when you are uh, making v, you are pushing back elements. So in the beginning, vector had a size of one. You pushed one element. it became a size of 2 you pushed two elements it became a size of 4 you pushed third element it remains the same you push the fourth element it double itself okay so this size now becomes 8 you push 5 so this is what happens when you do push back and repeated doub doubling of the memory happens but when you are doing d dot capacity in d you had initialized that this vector is going to contain five elements so very from the very starting the memory remains of five elements so that is why uh, d has a capacity of 5 and v has a capacity of 8 so capacity denotes what is the size of underlying array so this size is actually 8 and this size is 5 and d dot max size and v dot max size is same because uh, this is the worst case uh, according to the available memory so it does not depend upon how many elements you are holding how many uh, what is the largest possible array that your current system memory can hold so it depends upon that so that is that is same in both the cases okay so these are some basics about the vector and we will discuss about uh, vectors in more detail in the next video